In this video, we're going to focus on understanding the chart area. And the chart area you can see here is basically now being colored. So what we're going to do here is to understand the chart area, how we get these coordinates, and how we can start playing around with those coordinates and give certain colors and do a bit more of an advanced items. So let's start and explore how to do this. In this video, we're going to focus on understanding the chart area in Chart.js. And a chart area is a very useful item because once you understand that, you can understand better in drawing and designing items specifically in Chart.js. All right. So to do this, first of all, what we need is we need to get our default code here in getting started, chartjs3.com, and then go to getting started. And you might notice this for some reason, my Google Chrome gives this error. Anyway, we're going to copy this chunk of code here. Once we copy that, I'm going to paste that in there. And then I will cut out this, put it in there. Save that and then refresh. All right, so now we have here basically our bar chart here. And what I want to really indicate or clear, make it very clear is what is the chart area? Because many people might say, well, the chart area is basically the canvas. Because in the canvas, we draw the chart, which is correct. But that is not the official chart area. So the chart area is basically the starting point of our item here. Basically where we draw the chart officially. So if I open up my developer tab, you will see here. You can click on this. You can see here, this is the canvas here. And this is all fine. But the canvas here, if I click, if I hover over it here, you can see the tooltip showing 700 by 350 pixels however as you can see and let me just select this you can see this is the corner here where it starts or at least the canvas however the chart area starts in here this corner here and basically this line going down to here and then here the bottom line here and then here we go again back up and then here we have the top line so this is the right line bottom line and then we have here the left line but that is, oh sorry, not here, this one here, sorry. The, this one here, there, there, and then this line here as well. So you can see here, this is, the, this is the legend, just below the legend, we need to start with that. So with that, this is all fancy, but of course these are all pixels. So if we need to know how many pixels do we need to go to the left, you will see here the space. So we need to calculate that. So how do we calculate that? Well, luckily Charges has a built-in item, which is called the chart area, will indicate where it starts and where it ends. So I'm going to say here, I'm going to just grab here the my chart, and this is basically the uh, constant, which is basically our canvas ID. And then we say here, chart dot, the chart area. And if I do here now a console log, save this and refresh, you can see here we get now, click on this, we get this here. But this is of course not that clear, so let me just convert this into a table. Save that, console.table. Now you can see here the official starting point in the left. So this left line here basically would indicate that the beginning, which would be zero, and then here that space between is 27 pixels. At the top here as well, the top is basically this line here, and the top of the canvas starts here, which is 32 pixels going up here, or 32 pixels going down would be the starting point of the chart area. The right side is just the exact same si size as the canvas and the reason why this this is just the very end so there's no more and then we have here of course the bottom and the bottom is this line here. So what is the difference then we're going to the height and the width? The height would measure the height of here to here in pixels. So that would mean that we could calculate the pixels because if this would be the bottom line here, this pixel bottom could be calculated minus the top, which would be minus 32 pixels. And then what you will get is a height of 289, which is correct. Same with the width. The width here, because the official width of the canvas is 700 pixels. The right side is 700 because that's the ending point. But then we need to go to the left side. You can see here minus 27 pixels for the left. And then you will get here the width, which would be 672. So this is very useful. But let me go a little bit deeper. Because now we have this here. And let me just draw a quick 
item. So we're going to do here a, a plugin. So we're going to create here plugins. And then in here, bracket, and I'll just say here, chart area plugin. We're going to give it a background color. Basically, with our coordinates to confirm whatever we are saying if is correct on here, if we would draw it, because that should match. So we're going to do here, we're going to do here a constant. And this constant will be this plugin name. And then, of course, here, ID. We could do this optional for now. Doesn't matter so much. I just want to put in here this plugin. And what I want to really show you here, if we would draw a background color at this area, would we cover only this area or would we cover something else as well? So what I want to do here, I will say here the timing, this will be draw after. Uh, sorry, that will be after draw. That's the right term. Meaning that we will draw first everything on the canvas or on the chart. And at the very end, we will draw whatever we want to draw here. So then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say a chart. And then here we could do the arguments and options. Well, I will not use the other two. This one will be important because this one here is basically this here now. Because what I need to do is I need to split them out. If we call it object destructuring. So I'm going to say here, chart. Uh, before I do that, I will say here, constant ctx. And this constant ctx need to be in curly braces. Then here I'll say comma, I'll say here chart area, colon, and then I'm going to break them down. Basically, I want to grab this here. So I'm doing that, then eventually here I'll just say equal chart. So what I'm really doing is I'm splitting whatever is in here out. So I can just use these single keywords instead of always typing, for example, if I want to grab here later on the top. And then here if I type in top, so I can just use this as a keyword. So I can just say here, top will be this, and it will be exactly the same item. If I don't do this, I need to do here, for example, ctx.chart.chart area, then dot left or top, etc. etc. So that will be too much work, or even without the ctx, it will be chart dot this, basically this item here. And I don't want that, that's too much work for me. So I'm going to say here, top, bottom, left, Right, which is a shorthand, saves us some time and some characters, and reduces the code. So then, from here on, we can now start to draw. So let's say here, I'm going to say CTX, because I, oh, before I do that, uh, CTX save. This is very important because I want to save all the values that we have here that will be stored now in the canvas, and we can start drawing. And this here basically refers to the canvas itself. So now what we can do here, CTX dot uh, fill style, so I'm going to make a rectangle, I'm going to give it a color, so the fill style will be equal, let's say this will be black, and now if I would do see a very simple ctx that uh, rec, uh, sorry, fill rectangle, and here we can say, let's say this will be x, y, and then here with and this would be height. And x, you could basically convert to left. So where's the position on the left? And here would be the position on top. And you can see here we have this, and I realized that we forgot the other two. Maybe we should just put them in there as well, width and height. So you can grab all of these. Basically, we could now connect those. Of course, this is not an official term, but of course, we can use this term now because we have them here. But normally we would say here, this would be the x coordinate one or x zero, this would be y zero, and this you could better call it the w, the w and the height. And this could be like this. So this is the official items here. So, but now we want to convert it into pixels. And you can see here now what we have here, we should also grab this. So what I want to do here, just for the sake of it, I'm going to comment this out and just say here console log. And all I want to now show is can we get the same values that we have here? And the answer, of course, is yes. So what is the first one? It would be a left, top, right, bottom, height, width. All right. So we say here, left, comma, top, comma, bottom, comma, um, right, comma, record height and width afterwards, bottom, height and width. All right. So if I do this and save this now, refresh, 
you will see here it will happen multiple times this is normal because you have these animations but you can see here 27 they should be exactly matching 32 that's correct three uh, let's see here this is the uh, I guess that's this is the right side is 700 and this is here the bottom which is three three to one point six and you can see here everything matches nicely so now let's start to draw something on here so if I would draw here something very basic just by 10 pixels I make a cube or a square that's the right term for it save that refresh you can see here now we have this square here being drawn but what I want to do now is of course grab all our values that we have here put in here and see how this works so if I will say here this will be the left positioning so I'm going to put in left and then here will be the top and then this one would indicate basically the remember this was the width and the other one would be the height so if I would say here width then we get here the height save that and refresh you can see here now exactly covers everything on a chart and it's facing the chart area this becomes extremely important because you see here right now this is the timing this is the reason why I did draw after if I do draw before save that refresh you can see here now the bars are being drawn except for this one or this one is being drawn but it's a black color so you can, are not able to see that one but everything here is being drawn and the black background will be drawn first and afterwards we have the remaining one so what we can do here as well just for this for to play around a little bit more what what would we do if you would have one side blue and the other side black so we could say here uh, this would be the black side but then what we can do here is the width would be divided by two and if i will copy this i'll do here another one and this would be the blue side and the blue will be divided by two as well however we need to start where do we need to start well basically we need to calculate now where we need to start basically we need to start here so if i would do your constant uh, let's say left uh, left mid as we are going to be in the center now so what i need to do here is basically calculate the width divide by two and then what i need to do here and let me double check uh, we need to add the left but we need to add more here. We have the width divided by 2. To get that, or well, I think that should be more than sufficient. So let's try this to get this visual. If I save this now, refresh, you can see here nicely we get one side black and the other side blue. And that's basically the chart area. We can play around with this a lot because now we can really do all kinds of things like arbitrary lines and all kinds of other options as well. But this is the essential of it so if you want to know for example how to create arbitrary lines i have another video that i would highly recommend you as well to watch which is this video here on how to create an arbitrary line with text in charge yes, where you create a line you will create the text and of course a nice background color you already have some understanding of it but of course there's a lot more and i highly recommend you to watch this to go deeper into understanding the chart area structuring